So let's say we have an isotope, and it's going to go from 100% of its potential to decay to 12.5% of its potential to decay over the course of 100 days. We want to find out how long the half-life is. What you need to know is how many half-lives have gone by, or how many times has 100% been cut in half before we get to 12.5%. So we start with 100%, cut it in half once, that's 50%. Cut it in half twice, that gives 25%. Cut it in half one more time, a third time, that gives you 12.5%. In other words, over the 100 days, to get from 100% to 12.5%, we had to undergo three half-lives. In other words, our isotope had to be cut in half three times before we got to the target percent of 12.5%. So, if three half-lives took place in 100 days, you take 100 days divided by three half-lives, and that'll tell you how many days per half-life. And so that's roughly 33.3 .3 days per half-life. And that's how long a half-life is. So by Taking your radioactive sample and putting it under a Geiger counter, you can actually see what happens to your radioactivity over a period of time. Take that and find out how long the half-life is. You can also use half-life to make predictions about this is how much we have now, how much will there be a certain period of time into the future? Or this is how much we have now, how much would there have been at some point in the past? For this, we can use half-life very easily. This is my cat, Mina. She's got hyperthyroidism. Fortunately, right now, it's not very serious. She's on medication. Don't worry, everything's good. But there is a possible treatment that we could take her down to White Plains, New York, and actually have her implanted with iodine-131. See, because iodine gets absorbed into the thyroid gland, and it helps to kill the tumor that's causing the hyperthyroidism. The name of the place is called Radio Cat. Now, here's the thing. How long is a half-life of iodine-131 to the nearest day? We already said it was about eight days. We'll stick with that. Now, apparently, she's got to stay there for one half-life worth of time. In other words, I bring her down there, she gets the injection, she's got to stay one half-life of iodine-131 before she's safe to leave their facility. She'll be too radioactive. But... I can't cuddle with her for another two half-lives because she's going to be too radioactive for me to cuddle with. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be too difficult to live with. So how many more days will have passed? Well, two half-lives times eight days per half-life, and that equals 16 days. I can't snuggle with her for a little more than two weeks after I bring her home. This is terrible, although it could be worse. At least this takes care of the problem. Now, a standard dose for a cat her size, about 10 pounds, is 8.0 microcuries worth of radiation. Now, if that's how much they give her, how much will be left after the three half-lives of the past, the one that she had to stay there, and the two before I can cuddle her? Well, that's simple. We have 8.0 microcuries now. We're going to undergo three half-lives. After the first half-life, she'll only have 4.0 microcuries left. After the second half-life, she'll have 2.0 microcuries left. And then after the final half-life, she'll have only 1.0 microcurie worth of radiation left that she can transmit to me, her cuddler. Okay, we have two problems here that we can solve using half-life. The first one says, how many grams of cobalt-60 will be left in 21 years? That problem, we're going into the future, future, future. The second one says, what would the count have been 62.0 hours ago? We want to know how much it was 62 hours ago. We're going into the past. Now, you use basically the same technique to solve both problems. You start with finding out how many half-life periods have gone by. And what you do is you take the time elapsed, otherwise known as how much time has gone by, in this case 21 years, and you divide it by the time of half-life, or how long the half-life is. 
Now, the only way you can find that is by looking it up on this reference table. So let's see, cobalt 60, 5.26 years. All right? Now, when you divide, you're going to come up with a number that's either a whole number or really, really close to it. At the high school level, we're going to round to the nearest whole number. 21 divided by 5.26 is four half-lives. What that means is that it's undergone four half-lives to get from now into the future. Future, future. I wish I had a real echo, echo, echo on that. So we've got 16.0 grams now, and it's going to undergo four half-lives. So we're going to cut it in half four times. First time, 8.0. Second time, we're going to have 4.0. Third time, we're going to have 2.0. And the final time, fourth half-life, we're going to have 1.0 gram remaining. Now, we started with 16 grams. So we got one gram left that's cobalt 60. Well, what about the rest of the sample? What about the other 15 grams? Well, see, they're the daughter nuclide, right? It's changed into a new, a new element. So the remaining 15 grams is that new element. So going into the future, you're going to cut the amount you have in half by the number of half-lives you're going to undergo. In this problem, we're going to start it off exactly the same way. We're going to find out how many half-lives have gone by. Again, time elapsed, which is 62.0 hours, divided by how long the half-life is. What are we dealing with here? Potassium 42, 12.4 hours. Now, what does that mean? And that gives us exactly five half-lives. Now, we're starting with 30.0 counts per second. And we're trying to find out what would the counts per second have been back in the past. Now, you had to cut it in half five times to get to 30 counts per second. So if we want to go back to the past, We've got to do the opposite. We've got to double it five times. Double it once, 60. Double it twice, 120. Double it third time, 240. Double it a fourth time, you're going to have 480. And finally, double it one last time, 960 counts per second. And what that means, 62.0 hours ago, that Geiger counter was spitting out 960 counts per second. Per second! 960! That's crazy! Just go, figure out how many of those you can do in one second. You can't do 960. I'm going to guarantee you that. So 960 counts per second. Then it was cut in half five times to get to where we are now. 30 counts per second. So if you're going back to the past, Find out how many half-lives you've undergone and double the amount you have that many times. And that's how you solve half-life problems.